Friends and fans, our worldwide audience, it's James Com, the guy on the bike, coming to you from the Metropolitan Pavilion, 125 West 18th Street. And today, we're gonna go in and do our yearly tour of the Outsider Art Fair 2016. Stay tuned. Well, maybe not all the art is on the walls. So this is the 2016 Outsider Art Fair and uh, well I've been popping in and uh, visiting this fair since it was at the Puck Building and that's probably about 10 years ago and then there was a period of time when it was up on uh, 34th Street across from the Empire State Building and then it was in Chelsea and now it's here at the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Pavilion. And <laughs> I'm just gonna make a cursory run through because these things are huge. And also, uh, we're actually expecting a, what are they calling, a mega snowstorm. So I've gotta get home and take care of the Kate. Adams and Ullman. Wait, what's the name of this artist? Marlon Mullen. Marlon Mullen. Okay. Well, <clears throat> if you've uh, watched some of my other reports, uh, I usually have a little discussion or at least a little kind of. Uh, editorial statement about uh, outsider art and uh, its relationship to I guess you'd call it contemporary art. This is just folks from Summerlin, California. Well, they've got a very impressive uh, show to, right now at the uh, American Folk Art Museum and it's uh, Jean Dubuffet in the original collection of Art Brut and uh, sort of get into the whole history of how Art Brut came to the United States initially Jean Dubuffet oh, this is a nice piece by Eddie Erring Eddie Arning it's like a uh, print on paper. Clarence Woolsey, beer cub. That's a nice bottle cap assemblage. Anyway, um, Jean Dubuffet became acquainted with a gentleman that lived down on Long Island named uh, Alfonso Sorio who was the heir to a, uh, it was a Malaysian sugar fortune. And uh, he had a, uh, a compound out on uh, Long Island that a lot of famous artists would hang out at. People like Jackson Pollock. And I guess in the early, oh, these are nice. Car studies. By, Hage Dorn. Thornton Dial. Well, Alfonso Sorio kept the Art Brute collection on Long Island for about 10 years. 
and uh, added some exposure to some of the more sophisticated uh, artists and critics of the time. Now how this relates to what's going on here tonight, I just kind of wanted to uh, get into the whole question of Jean Dubuffet's original definitions of art brute, and then there's been further kind of categoriz categorizations as outsider art, naive art, and folk art. Mariposa, unusual art, New York. This is an interesting piece. O'Neill, Lionel Paul, Sasson La Montegne Haiti. This is the Joshua Lowenfeld from New York. Well, one of the things that happened with uh, Du Buffet is that once he started uh, collecting the work of, well, a lot of them were mental patients and prisoners and self taught artists, and other artists started seeing that these people were getting a lot of attention. Of course, they all flocked to Du Buffet and asked to be included in the uh, Art Brute collection, and then at some point, Du Buffet had to kind of uh, narrow down his categories and decide exactly who was an outsider or who who was real art brood and who wasn't. And he came up with a new category, something like uh, Inventions Nouveau, something like that. Because he wanted to dis distinguish between uh, the real art brood, the totally untrained, untouched by uh, the art culture people and other types of artists. These are pebble heads, carved limestone found in Prescott, Arizona, 1900. Oh, that's interesting. More Thornton Dial. As time has gone by, and just in the amount of time that I've been uh, watching the outsider work, these are pieces by Herbert Lloyd. Um, I've seen the market expand and become commercialized. I've seen magazines and publications started. And uh, even the museums have become very, very popular. This is the Mary Fines Gallery from Paris, France. And uh, they've got some wonderful uh, weavings by Maria Rose Lortel. And, uh, well, one of the revelations for me was when I went to see the uh, Art Brew collection that there were a lot of wonderful pieces that were embroidery and uh, tiny weavings that I'd never seen before. Those are nice. More by Marie Rosa Mortet. Well, we'll sweep across the Good Luck Gallery from Los Angeles. Of, uh, enjoy these hanging pieces. Like Macrame Gone Wrong. It's by Art Mora, mixed media, various sizes. Well, I noted last year that uh, they were actually curating uh, booths that had a combination of outsider artists and uh, young contemporary artists that they were pairing. And uh, I've said it before that a lot of the a lot of the artists, even a lot of the younger artists that I uh, talked to, it's by Noah. Ehrenberg. And these are mixed media and calendar pages. And, well, I've always been influenced by outsider art myself. 
but I think that it does present a problem in that, uh, well, I believe that Dubuffet had this belief that somehow in the people that were in the mental hospitals or in jail or they were self-taught, there was some kind of, uh, you know, the pure, natural human being and uh, of some kind of maybe a psychological or cu cultural utopia. These are by Andrew Frieder, mixed media on paper. Well, of course, any time that you get a uh, a movement or a uh, tendency like that that gets attention, a lot of people are going to be drawn to it. Oh, this is nice. This is Augustine Lesage. It's a great, great outsider. Actually started out as a coal miner and uh, had a revelation and uh, a voice inside his head told him to go out to the art supply store and buy a certain kind of paintbrush and paints and and then at some point he became known as kind of a um, trance painter. It's beautiful. This is the Paulisme Gallery des Nans. Marseille, France and Danville, Canada. And uh, yeah, somehow I was attracted to these pieces. They don't have a name tag on the wall. But I like the uh, folded paper. Nice dolls if you want to get something for your little kids here. This is Gallery Bonnier, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, I think another interesting thing about uh, the Art Brute Outsider Art, however you want to label is that uh, it's always been pretty uh, open to all comers, so you've got uh, various gender and uh, cultural and uh, racial types that get a lot of the attention. It's not exclusively, you know, limited to uh, educated white folks. This is an interesting piece. Let's see if I can read the tag there. The artist by Johnny John Barton. He's in his 30s now. He's like a way older. Greg is what? He's in 45. 45? Yeah, he's 45. What? He's 45? He's getting older now. Yeah, he's getting older. Oh my God. I guess I met him. This is a very interesting coloristically. This is. Yeah, he can. He's in his 40s. Katsarenzia Galowa. Oh boy, this lady lived to be 107 years old, 1896 to 2002, from Poland. Justin McCarthy. Robert St. Bryce. Oh gee, right here by the uh, entrance we've got a uh, very nice uh, selection of sculptures by the great Lonnie Hawley. And Joe Minter. Well, I first uh, came in contact with the work of Lonnie Holly when I was visiting Atlanta and uh, dropped in to see the uh, the Arnett collection. I visited the warehouse and uh, Bill Arnett gave me the tour and uh, well you can go and see it. It's all on 
James Compile, and he introduced me to Lonnie Holly at that point. And uh, well, it's been great because I've uh, kind of kept an eye out for him, and uh, it seems that uh, his career is taken off. Well, we'll sort of trot through an exhibition, a memorial exhibition of the work of Lionel Talpazan. Lionel Talpazan, the Outsider Art Fair is pleased to honor Lionel Talpazan 1956 to 2015 with a memorial exhibition of his art. Since the 1980s, New Yorkers may have had the chance to encounter a gregarious immigrant from Romania on the sidewalk hawking his drawings and paintings of outer space and UFOs, sometimes near MoMA, sometimes in Soho, and for many years at the entrance to the Outsider Art Fair. His work was collected by some, overlooked by others, yet recognized and acclaimed in numerous shows here and in Europe, and also the subject of museum acquisitions for periods of time. His art was shown by dealers and galleries in New York and Europe in the context of artists outside the mainstream. He appeared in a newspaper article, publications for Raw Vision, Art Forum, Freeze, and Folk Art Messenger to other devotees of ufology. Additionally, his life and art were shown in the PBS series City Arts and the BBC documentary Turning the World Inside Out. So a lot of the drawings are mixed media, crayon, some graphite, pastels. Oh, the painting is nice. And Lionel's got a lot of uh, text in these. I don't read French. <laughs> I can barely read English. <laughs> it's one of my favorites, always the Rico Moresca Gallery here in New York. And uh, we've got some text pieces here by Ken Grimes. Is this a warning? The name John White is found with the signal from a race of dead aliens. <laughs> well, Bill Trailer. One of the things I, I like about Bill Trailer is, uh, I don't know where he gets this, but this particular ultra blue and his very simple drawings is always extremely nice. It's a couple of large recent pieces by George Widner. Hmm. More George. And George is a good example of one of the um, recently discovered outsiders who has <laughs> become a very successful and in a lot of ways is probably an insider now. But a lot of these are dealing with dates and days of the week. And I always like the way he, uh, oh, he's using some kind of paper that he pastes together. William Hawkins. Well, we've got a wonderful selection of Martin Ramirez drawings here. And I believe I first saw these works at the Phyllis Kine Gallery in Soho. And, uh, Phyllis was a Chicago art dealer, and uh, she also showed a lot of the early outsiders, Martin Ramirez and Henry Darger, and the Harry Who group. I like the uh, collage section in the bottom here. 
Now, as I understand it, um, Jim Nutt and his wife, Gladys Nielsen, went out to San Francisco, I guess, sometime in the early 60s and were teaching out there, and they came in contact with somebody that had a, had a bunch of these Martin Ramirez pieces, and they were able to buy a bunch and take them back to Chicago and turned on a lot of the other Harry Who people to this particular artist. This is Fleischer Ullman Gallery, Philadelphia. And this is fun. So we've got, uh, it's like, guitars covered with cigar bands. Is that what those are? This works by Felipe Jesus Consalvos. And the violins are nice, and uh, gosh, the little cases are all totally covered as well. And we've got some straight collages on paper. Havana, American citizen. I would be interested in knowing uh, the time frame for these. Let's see if they've got anything on the wall labels. So it's saying these pieces are circa 1920 to 1950. So that narrows it down to a 30 year time frame. And, uh, well, that little muscle man figure makes me think of the great uh, Richard Hamilton. Uh, why is the modern kitchen different than all others? Or <laughs> one of the first examples of British pop art. This is nice. Felipe Jesus Consalvos. That's it for this cursory walkthrough of the Outsider Art Fair here at the Metropolitan, Metropolitan Pavilion for 2016. And, as always, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.